Indications tonight that a taped interview the president did with 60 Minutes today did not go as planned, including this tweet from the president calling out CBS's Leslie Stahl for not wearing a mask in the White House after they wrapped. So let's debate what went down at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue and another case of alleged censorship by big tech with Democratic strategist Kevin Walling and Media Research Center President Brett Brent Bozell. Thank you both for being with us tonight. Hi, how are you? Hey, Shannon, good evening. I am good. All right, Brent, I want to start with you because uh, the president says, listen, I may release my own version or my own video of this thing because I want the American public to see how I was treated. We were told they were very aggressive questioning. Right? That's what media is often doing, especially in the middle of a, a presidential election. Um, uh, but he wanted people to see and compare that with the way that former Vice President Joe Biden is getting treated. Well, Jonathan Swan of Axios tweets this out tonight. Not sure why the White House is giving 60 Minutes millions of dollars worth of free air, uh, pre-air promotions, but YOLO, I guess. You only live once. Brent, <laughs> good move to cut it off and threaten to release it to yourself? Well, to take it a step further from, from what Axios said, I, I don't know why he does this interview. Um, look, yeah, you know what you're going to get from 60 Minutes. I, I, frankly, it's a head scratcher. Uh, I don't know why the White House consents to interviews they know are going to go wrong from the beginning. They know that Leslie Slaw, you know, there's nothing wrong with a tough interview, but you just know that it's going to be gotcha on one end and it's going to be softballs to, to Biden. And that's what I'm sure we're going to see. So you know that's going to want to happen. So, so why did he consent to it? Why does he consent to it? He He's made the point that the media are out to get him. That is, everyone understands that now. He needs to be focusing on other things instead of picking these fights. I don't think this served him well at all. Uh, Kevin, do you give him some credit for sitting down for an interview? He knows it's going to be a tough one uh, in a way that we haven't really seen the former vice president pushed. Yes, and it's a good question. Uh, to Brent's point, and, and we're mostly in agreement, 60 Minutes is a tough interview. I remember back uh, in the 2000s uh, with uh, Barack Obama and Steve Croft. Steve Croft would really go after uh, then-President Obama with really tough questions. And uh, I think to Brent's point, uh, you know, the fact that his White House team is allowing him to sit down with 60 Minutes, allowing him to sit down with so many interviews with Bob Woodward uh, in the course of recording his book, I think is really problematic for this president. We're just two weeks out from this election, and this president has yet to settle on a final message to the American people, and attacking the media is what he's been doing for the last five years. That's not going to resonate with those middle voters that he needs to win over in these final two weeks. Okay, look, a, a point of agreement from you guys. So we'll take it on that point. But I want to talk to you about the Babylon Bee. This is a Christian satire site um, that is sometimes fact-checked, which is ridiculous. Um, but now they have been shut down or demonetized, they say, on Facebook because of an article that they posted about Senator Maisie Hirono during the hearings for Judge Amy Coney Barrett last week. I read the article. It seems pretty, uh, you know, um, Definitely not threatening or violent. It's talking about, uh, you know, playing off an old Monty Python joke of her. She's going to weigh a duck versus Judge Barrett to see if Judge Barrett is a witch. Now, um, apparently they were told that they were going to be demonetized because it was it could potentially incite violence. Seth Dillon with the Babylon Bee tweets this. In what universe does a fictional quote as part of an obvious joke constitute a genuine incitement to violence? How does context not come into play here? They're asking us to edit the article and not speak publicly about internal content reviews. Oops, did I just tweet this? Brent, it's the Babylon Bee. You know, it, this explains why people like Seinfeld won't go on college campuses and do comedy anymore. You're not allowed to laugh. This is pure satire. You know, it's like it's like YouTube that demonetized uh, Dennis Prager because he was advocating violence in a in a video that he did about the Ten Commandments because thou shalt not kill. I mean, this is true. This is this is like Facebook uh, uh, banning an ad from Mitch McConnell about because it was too violence when his ad was about the violence violence that was being perpetrated against him. Uh, you know, your head just spins around in circles. But at the end of the day, you can't laugh. You can't have satire. Babylon B is a hilarious. Look, the Onion does the same type of thing cannot the right. onion exist can't we just have a little chuckle especially when the world's gone mad well, i mean what is wrong with these people i mean yeah we all need a chance to laugh so kevin that is the question i don't ever see the onion getting demonetized or getting fact-checked by snopes i mean come on 
You don't, Shannon. This is a very dangerous panel in that I'm going to agree with Brent again, uh, which is <laughs> not really what you see uh, in these kind of debates. Uh, it is a satire website. I went through some of the articles. And funny enough, the president actually retreated one of them uh, not too long ago thinking that it was actually real. I think it kind of fooled him. Uh, but uh, I'm always going to come down, and, and Shannon, you and I have had these debates uh, for a while on, on the side of the First Amendment and free expression. Uh, and it becomes very problematic when uh, Facebook starts policing uh, these sites and determines what's violent, what's hate speech, what have you. Would they have a real problem in terms of violent actors on their platform? And there are real needs yeah. to take those uh, folks okay. out of uh, conversation, but this is yeah. clearly not the case here. Yeah. Yeah, the Maisie Hirono thing, I would invite people to read it and see whether they can find the threat in there. In the meantime, uh, we all need some laughs. So, uh, Kevin and Brent, thank you both. We do. <laughs> thank you. Thanks, Shannon. Good to be with you. Okay, what are the chances of a COVID relief bill actually getting done before the election? We take a look at where things stand next.